Hello, Flight Simmers. We're back with Miltech again for a look at their new mission hub and specifically how to get started with creating your own missions. The mission hub is available from the Miltech site for either purchase on its own or as part of a package with the MH60. But you can use it to create a mission for just about any aircraft as far as I'm aware. I recently created a short mission for the V-22 Osprey because, as I might have mentioned previously, I absolutely love that aircraft, possibly rivalled only by my growing love for the MH60. However, the type and capabilities of the aircraft will obviously affect what activities you can engage in on the mission. For example, you can't do a sling load mission if you don't have a sling. But that's enough intro, let's dive in and create a mission. The first thing you want to do is select the aircraft you want to use for the mission. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to stick with the MH60 because it allows us to try a variety of activities. Next, we need to pick a part of the world to spawn into. I typically pick somewhere on the ground with the engines off because you're not going to need them. I'd also recommend not trying to create your missions in VR as it's just kind of awkward. Now we're loaded into the world and there appears to be a member of the ground crew sitting on top of my FLIR camera. I'm not convinced that's meant to support the weight of a person, but never mind, let's get on with things. We want to go up to our toolbar and select the mission hub. You'll see I already have some missions I've been experimenting with. Once you have some missions here, you can edit them with a pencil or play them with the play button. That bit is fairly self-explanatory. But we want to create a new mission, so let's click on that. Now you can pop this window out onto your desktop by clicking here, rather than using it in the game window, and I highly recommend you do, as otherwise, when you type, the game will interpret it as keybinds, and it can make weird stuff happen without you meaning it to. We're going to get talking about the interface in just a moment, but first, I want to share two golden rules I've learned from playing around with this. One, save frequently. As we're all aware, MSFS 2024 is not the most stable application, and it would be really frustrating if you'd nearly finished building your mission, only for it to crash and lose all your work. But also, there's the escape key danger, which leads me on to the next rule. Two, don't ever, ever press the escape key. Now, this might just be a me thing, but I found a few times I'd create a connection or something similar, and you get a line that sticks to the cursor. Which, if I wanted to drop, I'd find myself reaching for the escape key, which is not the way to do it. If you do, you'll exit to the menu screen, and when you come back, all your work will have gone, and you'll have to start again. With that said, let's take a look at the interface. On the left we have the mission settings. This first tab is scenario details. These are primarily metadata, but are useful to have. Next is the briefing tab. The difficulty is just so the player knows what to expect and is fairly subjective, but doesn't affect the gameplay in any way. Estimated duration is likewise how long you think it should take, but isn't a time limit. And briefing text allows you to provide a briefing and add a little story-based immersion to the mission. Next we have the date and time, I think that's fairly self-explanatory. And environment lets us select weather presets and configure traffic settings. To get started creating a mission, just click on an area of the map and the menu will pop up with the different objects you can add. Let's start with activities. This lets us choose a special activity we can perform on the mission. In this case we're doing a search and rescue mission. Select search and rescue and pop it down on the map. I'm going to place it here in the water. Then select an appropriate rescue type. As we're in the water we probably don't want skier or road accident so let's go for fishing boat. 
Next, let's look at the world options. This lets us add 3D objects to the world like ships. Some you can even set as spawn points so that that's where you appear when you load into the mission. If you have the super carrier or UK carrier packs, you can add these as spawn points too. Although I found with the super carrier, the MH60 tends to fall through the deck in the hangar. You can also set the orientation of the ship as well as the speed. Let's leave it stationary for now. Next, we need to set up our scenario objects. Scenario objects are events that make the very core of the mission. You can think of them like writing a story with a beginning, middle and end. Spawn is where you'll spawn on the map. Objectives mark the different steps in the mission for you to complete as you progress. And end of mission is, well, the end of the mission. You can configure the different events and triggers so you either complete it successfully or you could even set it up to fail. We already have the ship set as our spawn point, so we don't need to add another one. However, as we'll be landing back here, let's set the end of mission event here too. And finally, let's add an objective near the search and rescue activity. Now we have some events set up, we need a way to trigger them, so let's look at our triggers. Circle or rectangle triggers allow you to specify an area that will trigger an event when you enter or exit. And if you want something to happen at a particular speed or altitude, you would use a property trigger. Timer trigger will trigger an event after a set amount of time. Takeoff and landing triggers pretty much do what they say on the tin. And likewise with parking trigger, with an option for whether to wait for the engines to shut down or not. So, let's set up some triggers. I'm going to start with a circle trigger over the search and rescue area and increase the size of the circle a bit. I'm also going to create takeoff and landing triggers which I'm going to place over the spawn point and end mission events. Now we need to create connections between the triggers and events. I like to work backwards through the triggers because that makes it easier for me to work out what needs to happen to get the intended outcome, if that makes sense. Okay, so we want the end mission event to be triggered by the landing trigger. There's two ways we can do this. If you hover over the landing trigger, you'll see a little arrow point. This lets us select a trigger event, in this case it's called landing. We just select the trigger event, and then select create connection, and we get a line that sticks to our cursor. Now move your cursor over the end mission event, and select mission successful. And now landing here will complete our mission. But you still have this line stuck to your cursor. To drop it, just hit the tick box. Do not press escape, you'll lose everything. I really hope I'm not the only one that keeps doing that. Not that I want other people to lose their work, I just don't want to be the only dumbass who keeps doing it. But we currently have a potential issue. The player could take off and land again without doing the rescue and it would say mission complete. Meanwhile our rescuee, if that's the right word, is still drowning somewhere. If we click on the landing trigger there's a box that says activate on start. If we unselect that, it won't work until it's been activated. So, how do we activate it? With the trigger activated, we're going to choose activate, add connection, and drag the line all the way over to the search and rescue activity and assign it to the hoist completed event. Now, you can only complete the mission if the survivor has actually been rescued. Now, let's select our objective. This could be rescuing the survivor, but that already gets recognised by the mission flow. However, our first objective should really be to reach the search site. So, let's set the title to Search and Rescue, and use the circle trigger to mark it as successful.
and we'll set the objective and the circle trigger to be enabled by the takeoff trigger and now we're back to the start of the mission. It's considered best practice to have your triggers disabled until the preceding events have been completed to ensure the mission happens in the correct order. This should be enough to give us a half decent rescue mission and the objectives should give you bearing and distance to each one. However, you might want to create a route as well. To do this, we select route and just place the first waypoint, then click the arrow and place all the subsequent waypoints until your route is complete. And now it's time to see if it actually works. We've loaded onto the deck of the ship we selected and can see our first objective and activity at the top of the screen. Let's get in the air and bring up our route on the tablet and set the HSI to map mode. As we approach the boat, you'll see we complete our first objective. Go us! Now we just need to get ourselves into position for the rescue. I'm using the auto hover to get myself into position and hold me there while I operate the winch. If you've not seen my autopilot tutorial, allow me to shamelessly plug it at the top of the screen now. Down goes the winch. Cable down. Hoist coming up. Survivor attached. Raising hoist. Now we have the survivor on board. It's time to head back to the ship to complete the mission. It might have been helpful to add another objective to return to the ship, to provide us with a bearing to follow and an instruction on what to do next, but that's all part of the testing and development process. And now we're coming into land. Ten feet. Ten feet. Five feet. And as soon as we touch the deck, we get the mission successful message, and we're done. 
Hopefully this has given you a taster of how to get started with this cool new tool from Miltech. And I hope you have lots of fun bringing your ideas to digital life. I'm personally going to work on some more V-22 missions and hopefully Miltech will come out with their own mission packs for the Osprey and Chinook in due course. In the meantime, have fun building your own missions and fly safe. <laughs>